What I have here is um, a rubber mold I've taken of an intake port on a head, uh, stock 944 8 valve head. Um, it was kind of an interesting process, so I you know cleaned it up really well. I put the valve in and um, you know um, tilted the head so that it was sitting in this orientation, so the top would be perfectly flat. And I mixed up a two-part silicon rubber, and then I poured it in. And then um, after it was cured, I uh, actually used a hydraulic press and pushed it out, pushed it out down in the, the valve side. Um, I did tear it a bit, so I do have to be gentle with it. But um, uh, that's what it looks like. I'll take the valve out for a minute here, if I can do it with one hand. There we go. I don't know how much of this will show up on the video, but um, you know, I can certainly see where there's some room for improvement from a good porting and polishing job. So, you know, a few things I want to point out. First of all, you see this casting line on, you know, both sides. So that's where um, the casting was kind of rough and protruding out into the wall of the, of the passageway. So, you know, it made the negative indentation here. So, you know, certainly that could be smoothed down and help. But if you look down towards the seat area. It's um, it's pretty smooth around here, but not quite all the way around, you know. So, so what, how this was created or machined, you know, the, the, the hole or the opening, the passageway is cast into the head, and then they come in with the machining tool, and they machine a bore down just as far as they need to then put the seat in. So if you can see that transition from this kind of smooth part here to the very smooth part right there, you know, this is the steel seat that's pressed into the aluminum head. And this is the machining area on the aluminum head to, uh, you know, to match the, the seat diameter. But, you know, it only comes in so far and then it just kind of bottoms out into the casting. Um, so blending this, blending the casting into this would probably help. And then, you know, this is where the, the part that hits the valve, obviously. If we look at the top, we can also see inside the hole, that's the depression that the valve guide makes. Um, you know, if you cut down the valve guide or, you know, machine away the valve guide some, um, you do create a little bit more area for the air passageway to go to because then it would be the valve stem all the way up. But I'm not entirely sure that's going to buy you a a whole lot if you're doing porting work. Um, I think the biggest thing that people say is is this this tight radius, you know, the bottom wall radius. So the air has to come down this way and as the air goes over this curve, the air is going to try to separate. So it's going to create like a little vacuum pocket or, you know, the air is not going to flow right next to this curve on the bottom part of this valve. So, you know, trying to improve this transition, making it a larger radius, things like that. Um, th that probably is going to give you good gains. Um, also looking at this, on the bottom side, it's actually flat on the bottom. I think maybe you can see it right about there. Or maybe if I hold it this way, you know, it's, a, it's actually a little flat there. And, um, you know, rounding that might, might help that, that transition. Um, the biggest or the most interesting thing to me is really, I had never really thought about how the valve interacts with, with this chamber. So I'm going to put it in, you know, like the valve was, was closed. So and the valve's all the way closed. It's obviously well seated like that. But let's say the valve's open 50 thousandths of an inch. That's about that much, which it shifted on me a little bit. Well, that's probably about a tenth of an inch. So that's, you know, a hundred thousandths of an inch. That's probably about 50 there. Um, the big thing that I realize is that that's such a small opening on this, this side of the, the, the short radius side 
that no air is going to flow through this side of the valve. All the air is going to go to this side of the valve. So anything we can do, so I don't know, rough guess, maybe one third of the valve here. So, you know, looking from here to here isn't going to have any air flowing through. So at uh, 50 thousandths lift, you're only going to be getting air flowing through you know, this little back edge right here for maybe two thirds of the valve. And at full lift, which I have a caliper here to measure, this is set to about 460, which is about the full lift of the 944. So it's about, I'd say that's, you know, approximately full lift on the valve. Even here, I don't think that much air is going to make this U-turn, you know, around from this side of the radius and then come out this way. You know, most of that air is going to want to go in this direction. And if you even decrease this radius here, if you, you know, if you were able to add material into the port to, because right now this air has to go this way and then that way, so that's kind of a big S curve. If you could reduce that S curve, you could probably get some improved efficiency there as well. But it's um, kind of interesting looking and at this and visualizing, you know, what the air passageway into the engine is. And I can definitely see how there's room to be, or there's improvements to be gained by, by good porting and, you know, good flow work and really analyzing what you're doing. You know, just polishing it or just making it larger up in this area um, isn't going to buy you much. Um, I think, again, it's this this uh, the, the short radius on the on the lower wall is probably you know what's going to help you the most. So anyhow, that's my take on it. I'm not an expert. I only play one on TV. Um, you know, I'm really learning as I go, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to take this cast.